Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources I used in order to complement the third grade Waldorf curriculum by live education. This video is part of a series of videos for the third grade year. I have a video in which I show in detail the third grade curriculum. There's another video that shows all the main lesson books that my kids have created for the third grade year. I have another video that shows all the supplies that you'll need for third grade and finally another video that shows all the handwork projects for the third grade year. So the first thing you might notice about this curriculum is that it's quite small. It comes with six different main lesson books and these are going to be your main lesson blocks for the year. Now while you could probably just use the curriculum over the years, I've noticed that adding a couple of additional resources really helps round out the curriculum. In addition to that, I've also picked out some books that complement our culture and our religion that was especially significant for this particular year. So let me show you the main lesson blocks for the third grade year. You have a book on Hebrew myths and culture. This is Creation and Patriarchs. You'll notice that this book is going to go over a lot of biblical and Jewish stories, and this is going to be one of the history main lesson blocks for the year. There's also the main lesson block on literature, grammar, spelling, and word families. And this main lesson block actually can complement the other main lesson blocks of the year. These lessons can be really short, maybe 10 to 20 minutes, versus the main lessons that are up to about two hours. Time, weight, measure, and money. This is going to be the math main lesson block for the year. And while you can do this as a main lesson block, you're also going to want to do mental math and daily math exercises throughout the year. So doing this at the start of the year allows you to practice the concepts that you've learned in this main lesson block throughout the remainder of the year in small daily math exercises. Humanity on Earth, Shelter, Clothing, and Farming. This main lesson block is packed with hands-on activities and projects. This one is going to be quite a bit more time-consuming, and you'll want to set aside some time either in the afternoon or set aside one or two months in order to complete this main lesson block. Myths and Culture, Akkad and Sumer. This is going to be the other history main lesson block for the year. This one has a lot of watercolors for the main lesson block. I'll show you some of the resources that we've used in order to do the, the watercoloring. And the last book is Hebrew Myths and Culture, Prophets and Kings. And this main lesson block complements the other history main lesson block. This includes form drawing, some additional stories, additional lessons, as well as information on celebrations, festivals. There's some recipes in here, and all of this will complement the other history uh, main lesson block on Hebrew Myths and Culture. All right, so let's look at the books that we've used for this year. Okay, so let's start with Myths and Culture, Akkad and Sumer. You'll notice that this main lesson block has a lot of these really beautiful watercolor paintings. And it's suggested that this main lesson block be done on watercolor paper and the narrations for each lesson be done on the back of the watercolor. So when we did this main lesson block, we did all of our watercoloring and uh, the narration for each of those lessons. And then we took the entire book and had it bound at a local office supply store. So that is one option you can do for this main lesson block if you choose to do the watercoloring. You can always do this with color pencils, but I really like how they've included these different watercolors that complement both the main lesson as well as the different watercolor lessons that complement this age group. So as the water color lessons progress from first grade through eighth grade, they go from being very broad and general to more specific. And even on this watercolor, you can see that it's just basically blue, but you can also see how there are light and dark parts of this. There are a variety of techniques that will be taught while doing this particular main lesson. All right, so to complement the watercoloring, I thought that the book Color Dynamics might help, especially if you're new to Waldorf watercoloring. This book comes with a lot of information. The watercolors are just beautiful, and they take you from the most basic lessons through to more advanced lessons. Now, while we didn't have this book the first time we did this main lesson block, I think that will make a great addition. 
information. Even if you don't have this book, I think that enough information comes in the main lesson block that you don't need an additional resource. I just find this book to be such a valuable asset to the Waldorf curriculum. The next book I want to show you is called Gilgamesh, Man's First Story, and this will complement a couple of the lessons that are in the main lesson block. And so while this is not entirely necessary, since again, this main lesson block happens to come with enough resource information in order to put together the lessons, I thought that having an additional resource might be a nice addition to this. You could also take these lessons and make the lesson on Gilgamesh that's in this book just a few days longer and really go into more detail about these historical events. All right, let's move on to the next main lesson block. This main lesson block is on Hebrew myths and culture, creation, and patriarchs. For this main lesson block, we actually used our own resources rather than the main lesson block and rather than using the additional resources that the book recommends that you get. Now, for most of the main lesson blocks, you don't need any additional resources, but this particular one recommends two of them, Legends of the Bible and Golden Children's Bible. We opted to use our own additional resources and create our own lessons inspired by this main lesson block. So we haven't ever actually done this one, but we did do stories that were similar to the ones in this book. So I want to show you some of the additional resources that we used. The first one is a resource book similar to the previous one on watercoloring. This one is on drawing. And since there are a number of main lessons, which includes artwork that was done with either color pencils or crayons, I thought that having an additional resource on drawing in the Waldorf philosophy might be helpful. While we didn't have this book while we were doing this main lesson block, I think that this is a great addition, especially if you are new to the Waldorf philosophy. This is gonna go through the different drawing techniques from as early as first grade through middle school. So these are the resources that we use in order to create the lessons for this particular main lesson block. While a lot of the stories are similar, we decided to go with some resources that would complement our culture and religion. So we have this series of Prophets of a Lost Stories. There are five volumes and it's by ICRA International Education Foundation. So I wanna show you how beautiful these stories are. The first thing is that the illustrations are really lovely. And what I especially like about these illustrations is that they are simple enough that you can actually use these illustrations as inspiration for your own artwork in your main lesson books because they're done in a really simple manner. They're not complex and it's just perfect for the third, fourth grade year. The stories in here are really beautifully written and you can either read them aloud or you can read this ahead of time and then you can present the stories. There were a couple of places where I wasn't quite thrilled with the wording, but that's just a, a, a personal critique on the books. Otherwise, I think they are fantastic resources. So I wanna quickly go through uh, each of these volumes and show you that the illustrations are all fairly simple. I think they are fantastic for uh, art inspiration for the main lesson blocks and the stories themselves are really well done. And this is volume one and this is volume two. And you can see that all the books are pretty similar as far as the illustrations go. And the length of the story varies depending on the prophet. All right, so this was volume five. All right, some of the other resources that we used during this main lesson block are the Stories of the Prophet by Ibn Kathir. Now, this is going to go through the same stories that this set of books went through. So if you prefer to have a resource that you will read ahead of time and then present to your children, or you just want deeper information, more broad information, then this would be a good book to use. This book wasn't one that lended itself very well to reading aloud for this particular age group, but you certainly could use this as a read aloud for older students. Okay, because so you can see that it's a lot more dense and it also has verses from the Quran included, which is great to have that reference within this book. I forgot to mention that this book also has references to Quranic verses within the stories. 
Okay, the other books we used for this unit are The Greatest Stories of the Quran. This is by Good Work Kids. And this one has some really beautiful illustrations and some really fantastic stories. The illustrations are a little bit more complex, so I did not really use too many of these for this particular main lesson block, but we did get some inspiration from this book for illustrations for some previous main lesson blocks. I only just had to simplify some of them since they were a little bit too complex for the younger years. We also have Tell Me About Prophet Yusuf, and this one is by Good Work Kids. Again, really beautiful illustrations in here. Again, a little bit more complex for the third grade student, but it's possible that some of these could be drawn into the main lesson book. And this one in particular also will really help for uh, the main lesson block on shelter, clothing, and farming. And then the last book I have is Tell Me About Prophet Musa. This is also by Good Word Kids. And again, very similar to the previous one, beautiful illustrations and a really nice story. This would be a great read aloud for any time of year. It doesn't just have to be for this particular main lesson block. All right, so let's move on to another main lesson block. All right, we have Hebrew myths and culture, prophets and kings. Now this particular main lesson block is going to go over form drawing and the festivals and some other projects that you can do throughout the year. And so since we didn't follow these particular lessons, I wanna show you the books that we used that can complement this main lesson block. I really like all the form drawing that's in here. So the first book I wanna show you is Creative Form Drawing. This is for students uh, ages six to 10. Now this is a new book for us, so we didn't have this the first time we were going through this main lesson block, but I think that this book will be a fantastic addition, especially if you wanna concentrate a little bit more on form drawing techniques. You can see that they get fairly advanced and they'd be perfect for the third grade student. Another resource that would complement this main lesson block as well as any of the grades between first grade and third grade is this resource on coloring with block crayons with an emphasis on the primary colors. So by the time your student gets to third grade, she'll probably be using the full set of crayons or at least eight different colors. And so this is probably a really valuable resource for first and second second grade, but I still think that the drawing techniques will come in handy for third grade, even though at this point you're probably moving out of crayons and into color pencils. Thought that I would share it with you just in case coloring with black crayons is a challenge for you. All right, the other resources I want to show you have to do with crafts and projects through the year. So the first one here is called the Islamic Year Surah Stories and Celebrations and this will be perfect for the third grade student. It comes with so many different projects to do. A lot of stories and celebrations and festivals uh, are included in this book that will complement this main lesson block. This would also go really well with the sixth grade curriculum for the unit on the Middle Age and the Silk Road. There are a number of projects that would really complement that year as well. The other book that might come in handy is Crafts Through the Year. This is not a book that I've gotten like a ton of inspiration from. The reason why I am sharing it with this particular year, this, this grade, is because there are a lot of projects that make use of natural products, things that you can find in nature, uh, wheat, twigs, acorns, pine cones, and this is going to be especially helpful for the third grade student because a lot of the handwork that the student can do in addition to weaving and knitting and sewing uh, will be projects related to things that the student can find in nature. So working with twigs and reeds and straw. And so this, this particular book might come in handy for that part of the curriculum. All right, so let's move on to the next main lesson block. Humanity on Earth, Shelter, Clothing, and Farming. This main lesson block is going to require a little bit of prep work in order to get the resources that you'll need in order to actually build some of these shelters. Now, some of them are fairly simple and you could probably construct them at the park. And some of them are a little bit more complex, like making Noah's Ark or this project right here 
which took us quite some time to build after all the mistakes that we made, but it was a really valuable experience. So in addition to getting your actual physical materials for this main lesson block, I also have a couple of resources that might come in handy. The first two things that I want to show you actually are just um, a book and a uh, a pocket guide. The book is called My Side of the Mountain and the reason why I think this particular book will work really well with a third grade student is because it's all about a boy who lives out on his own in the mountains for an entire year and he hollows out a tree and he makes egg corn pancakes and he gets shellfish and digs up roots and he does all these things that will really complement the third grade curriculum and it's going to really work well for the nine-year-old student who is going through that nine-year change. So this would make a fantastic read aloud to complement this curriculum. There's also a pocket guide to the outdoors based on my side of the mountain, which I think would be a fantastic addition, especially if you are going to read this book. So this book is going to cover a lot of the survival skills based on this particular book. So it's going to have some things on making shelters, building fires. There's information on the different wildlife, the things that are edible, uh, nuts and berries. And then there is some information on uh, different kinds of knots. So I think that this is a really valuable resource that would complement not just this particular main lesson block, but any nature study or outdoor study that you want to do. Now, another book I want to show you is called The Ultimate Encyclopedia of Knots and Rope Work. While you don't need something this extensive, I did want to show this one to you because this is the one that we've had in our homeschool library for years. I think finding a smaller book that just has a few different popular knots would probably be better unless you have a student that is a knots enthusiast. Otherwise, there are a lot of other resources on tying knots, and I think that some of those might be a little bit better than one that's so extensive like this. And the last book I want to show you is called Respect the Spindle. And this is really just as a teacher resource to provide a, some additional information on weaving, uh, the drop spindle, and even a little bit on knitting because that's going to come up in uh, this main lesson block on clothing. And so this might come in handy for that particular part, especially if you are new to uh, weaving and using the drop spindle. You can also get a book on sewing as well because uh, there'll be a little bit of sewing this year, like hand stitching, and then there'll be more lessons on sewing in the, in the coming years. Uh, this is definitely not necessary. I find that the curriculum does come with enough information on doing this part of the handwork uh, related to weaving and using the drop spindle, but an additional resource is always a good thing if you want to dive into that particular subject area a little bit more. All right, the next main lesson block is time, weight, measure, and money, math for practical life. So this is going to go over linear measurement, time, and then some basics in the four math operations. So for this main lesson block, I first want to show you a book that is not quite right for this age group, but I want to show you an example of some of the mental math that you can start to do with the third grade student. This is called The Little Book of Number Chains, and it has multiple operations before you get to a result. And usually the operations deal with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And in some cases, you have like a square root, which the students haven't learned yet. So while these problems are a little bit too advanced for the third grade student, again, idea of what the mental math might look like as the students get older. So this is a great resource, just not quite yet for the third grade student. For the third grade student, you can still go ahead and make up your own really simple problems. For instance, uh, once the main lesson has been completed, and I would recommend doing this earlier on in the year so that you can continue to practice these concepts throughout the year, unless your child isn't quite ready for it, then I would recommend saving this main lesson block for the end of the year. And then you can continue to practice these concepts in the following year. 
But what you could do is, since the four operations are going to be covered in more detail towards the end of this main lesson block, and it's going to build on the math that the student has previously learned, then doing some mental math uh, to accompany the opening activities on a daily basis will help keep those skills sharp. So some mental math problems might be something like uh, two times three, or how many inches in a foot, or how many inches in half a foot, or uh, how many minutes in an hour, or how many seconds in a minute and a half. Things like that that will reinforce some of the concepts that were learned with linear measurement as well as time, and then also bring in a math component as well. So it's a good time to continue to work on the times tables. So while I don't have a book like this to help with those mental math problems, you can certainly come up with them pretty easily on your own. Before I show you active math, I want to show you teaching mathematics in Rudolf Steiner schools for classes 1 through 8. I do have an in-depth review of this book and you can find that link down in the description box below. This is going to be a valuable resource if you want more information on the Waldorf approach to math throughout the years so you can see how it builds from grade to grade. You don't need this particular resource book for this math curriculum. I feel like this math curriculum has enough information to build the lessons as well as enough background information on the Waldorf philosophy that you don't need this additional resource. I think this additional resource is really great if you want to depart from the curriculum and start to create your own for the years or you're just curious on how uh, math is approached in Waldorf schools. All right, active math is a great addition to this curriculum and this is going to work for multiple ages. Uh, being able to bring movement into math or music into math is really going to help solidify those concepts. Plus, I do not know a single child who won't jump at, literally jump at the opportunity to do active math. You can do it in the form of simply tossing a bean back back and forth and reciting the times tables. You can get counting sticks and tap them together to do your division facts. Uh, you can also also use a jump rope in order to do your math facts and you can also use like a racquetball and you can stand in a circle or a triangle and you can throw the, the ball and you can bounce it and toss it and then grab it and you know grab it with your left hand put it in your right hand and then toss it again so you get that cross body action as well as movement math as well as arithmetic i know it sounds a little complicated and it does take a little while to get into the rhythm of it but it has been so valuable in our homeschool and i hope that you try it out now i have not used this book yet even though we have done active movement math in our homeschool as part of our opening activity but this will make a great resource if you want to dive into active math a little bit more. The last book I want to show you is called Math in the Garden, and this is a new book for us. And we've used this one before in order to bridge our gardening activities with our math activities. And so this might be a good option for this curriculum as well, since there is a whole unit on farming and that would coordinate really well with the math curriculum. All right, so let's move on to the last main lesson block, and that's on literature, grammar, and spelling. For this particular main lesson block, you don't necessarily need any additional resources, but I want to show you a few that will come in handy both for the teacher as additional background information on grammar, as well as some fun stuff for the kids. All right, so I wanna show you some of the grammar books that we have used in our homeschool. Now, if you need a refresher course on grammar before you start teaching it to your children, the two books that I would recommend are Pocket Style Manual and The Only Grammar Book You'll Ever Need. Now, this one is a little bit more recent, so it's probably easier to find. It's short, it's really 
easy to find the information that you need on any particular grammar topic. And a bonus is that this book also comes with a workbook, although this is not going to be a third grade level. When I use this, I use this with my middle school student, and this would also even work well for a high school student. Just want to point out that it does come with a workbook, but I think that the book itself is a really great addition and probably the only one that you'll need. But I do want to show you a pocket style manual. This is also a really easy book to read uh, or rather to refer to for uh, most grammar rules. I don't know if this one is still available. This one, however, is a recent addition to our homeschool library and it's called the Blue Book of Grammar and Punctuation. I did not like this one as much as the previous two that I showed you, but the perk of this book is that there are quizzes in the back of the book. And so that is a nice addition. However, I would not use these quizzes for the third grade student. I think these would work really well for a middle school student or a high school student. All right, so let's put those resources aside and get to the fun stuff for the student. I have a couple of books and games that I think will work really well for the third grade student. This first game is called Quiddler, and it is like Scrabble, only you are using cards instead, and then you try to form words. And so I thought that that might be a nice game to play for the third grade student, but honestly, you could play this for any grade. Now, while this game was fun, it just doesn't beat Scrabble. And we are huge Scrabble fans in our family. And so we also have Travel Scrabble because we'll take it on road trips. And what's really great about Travel Scrabble is that if you have toddlers in the house, then this version of the game is a must have because the letters lock in place on the board and there's nothing worse than a toddler swiping over the game and all of the pieces getting jumbled up and messed up. And so this allows you to keep all of the tiles in place and you can see they're not going anywhere. So, and then another perk is that you can actually close up the game and you can save it for later. And uh, if you don't have time to finish it, during that one playing session. So uh, this is definitely one of the games that I would highly recommend, not just for third grade, which might be a little bit young for the third grade student if she's not fully comfortable with, uh, with spelling, but if you amend the rules a little bit and help with the spelling and help construct the words, then I think that it can be really enjoyable for both the students as well as the parents. Okay, so the other things I wanna show you, let's do Mad Libs first because I'm sure you are familiar with this grammar game where there's a paragraph that's written and the nouns and adjectives and some of the other parts of speech are removed and then you add them in. So you don't, so the person who's uh, guessing which adverbs or verbs to put in, they don't know what the story is about. So it's quite a laugh when you start to read the story with verbs and nouns nouns that don't relate to the story. Now you can use the Mad Lips the way they are, or you can write your own that relate to the main lessons that you're doing, or you can just write your own and have a lot of fun with it. So Mad Lips are definitely going to be a great addition, especially for this particular grade, since you're going to be covering the nouns, verbs, adverbs, and adjectives. Um, this will make a great way to reinforce those concepts. Uh, something else that's pretty fun is this series of books by Discovery Toys. It's gonna go over adjectives, nouns, adverbs, and verbs, and they're just fun picture books. And it's just something that we've had in our homeschool library for a while, and we tend to pull it out when we are introducing uh, th these parts of grammar. And the last book I want to show you is called Spelling by Hand, and this is the Waldorf Approach to Spelling. And I thought that this would make a great additional resource for this main lesson block, but we have not used it yet, so I can't give you a full review of this particular book. 
So I hope that the resources I shared with you today are helpful for you. Remember that you don't need quite this many additional resources to complement the curriculum since it comes with quite enough as it is. Don't forget that if you want to see some of the other videos in this third grade series, you can tap on the screen right now. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below.